or the one type of fishing that I really do quite enjoy and more so the older I've got and that's float fishing in the margins on a lake with small floats, small hooks, match rod, loose feed going in. It's great fun. But on this trip I had a load of work to do and I thought is it even worth going? Is it even worth turning up? I had about two or three quarter hours by the time I left home, by the time I got up to the bank, set up, I had barely over two hours fishing, but conditions were good. I had to go for it, and boy, I was so pleased I did. So folks, I'm here. Just bump that float a second. I'm here at Watmore. Just got set up, had a couple of little ropes already like this on the right hand swim. So, here's the deal. The last time I came here, I lucked out with a really nice perch. And I've come to the same swim. The wind's slightly a different direction, but it's still fairly slick. I'm float fishing here, but I've got worms on the left, thinking perch, obviously, and double red maggots on the right. So two floats on there. I haven't got such a delicate float on the left because I've got a worm. I figure I'm going to have to pause before I strike, you know, let them take it. I might put two or three worms on there, see if that attracts them, because big perch will take big fish or big log worms. I've got ground bait. I've got some of this black perfume. I was just asking Andy, the owner, what because he does match fishing. We don't know what he thinks it's coconut the smell that's in it, but it's a really, really nice smell. Fish seem to like it. Down here I've got I've got worms there. You can get small different sizes of worms from your tackle shop, big ones, small ones. I've got some red maggots there that I had in the fridge and seemed to sort of sweat up. I think I put another bait box on them and I think dying of oxygen starvation. And I think they foamed and sweat up. So what I've done is I've put some of that perfume ground bait in with the red maggots, if that makes sense. Just trying to get rid of any taint of the, there might be of ammonia on there. What else have we got? Oh yeah. Usual for a sort of winter bait casters. So I've got literally two and one quarter hours left to try and catch something decent or any fish. Some nice roach would be handy. A perch would be absolutely sublime and out of this world. And the carp, I don't know, they're a small match along here after some guys and a gentleman walked past, he's, all he's done is lost two and caught nothing. And that's all day, or the duration of the match. That was a small bite. I mean, I've got my float there on the antenna float, very delicate one, shot it right down. I've gone from a size 20 hook to a size 16, a three pound hook link, just in case I get a big fish. I'm fairly close to the lilies there. And fingers crossed, what's happened? I've plumbed it. You've got to plumb depths, guys. If you haven't been anywhere, you should be watching that. You should be watching the float for me. Hang on, bear with me, people. Bait gone. You should always, if you can, plumb that depth. And because what I found there is a ledge. And what I'm thinking is, what was very deep, it's a really deep place, generally. And I think, as it goes from the bank, it drops down to a ledge, it goes deep. And I think the small fish, because it's getting towards, say, winter, there's less weed and growth out in the deep water for them to take shelter in. I think they're up around the margins, the roach and stuff, I really do. And I figure the roach are in there and any other bait fish, the big perch will be patrolling up and down that edge looking for their food. You've got to ask yourself this, if you're a big perch, why would you be out in the middle of the lake where there's no food? You'd be along the edge of the margins. And that's my theory. <sighs> Gonna look embarrassed if it don't work, aren't I? More bait. I don't mind catching roach because at the end of the day, that is all activity. The feed that's going in is, oh, missed it. It's all activity that will, will hopefully attract a perch, all those small fish. So I'm just barely what we call dead depth with this. Dead depth with the right hand float means the bait is absolutely touching the bottom. Here's, there's the lake bit, there's the surface. The bait comes down here, the float set here, it's just about touching the bottom. The worm I got just over the bottom a little bit because I've got no drag to worry about. As you can see, it's slick calm there anyway. So that's the story, guys. So I've just got to keep that feed going in. I like to stand up 
and get right on top of that. Oh, I missed it, this small roach. Get right on top of that float. Like that, I want to be right. I like a match when I want to get it there. I want to get it in a small six inch saucer sized area of bait and I want my maggot in the middle of it. I might move that camera for there unless you guys like it. People, I've got to get fishing. I can't keep talking to this camera. I just had a bite in the worm as well. Every time I put a little bit of bait in, something happens. Well, I'm getting a few very, very slightly better roach now. I'll show you this one, look. If you hold still. Much better stamper roach. It's still not a big one though. But you never know. At least I'm catching fish. At least I've finished all those awful jobs and I'm grabbing a oh, bite on the big, 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 big. Nothing. That was a bite on two worms there, guys. So I'm figuring if I get it back out there, it might be. I don't think that was a perch. That probably was just, I guess, Roach just tugging at one worm and holding it. He did hold the float down there, so that's a good pointer. In fact, just for doing that alone, they just deserve a little sprinkling there. I might actually try a single maggot, to be honest. So what you do, you've got to overcast the swim so you don't disturb it. Sink the line, wind, stop every once in a while till you get your depth of where, uh, you know, your area the float's going to be, and then put it in the rest. I expect to bite quite quickly on this one. Oh, I missed him. That was a quick bite. Generally, a sign that I need to move the shot down a little bit. I want to a very small shot, possibly near, I'm going to hold that one. Because it's sinking so slowly, I tend to think that the smaller fish rise up first in the water and take the take the maggot on the way down. As if I could... Ah, now I missed him again. I think they're small ones. Yeah, I haven't got, I haven't got a shot down here. I might want a very, very small shot number eight or something just to keep me tight to the float but I'll tell you what we do to see what they are let's try a caster maybe just a single caster tell a lie I'm gonna put two on yeah tomorrow they're given really really torrential rain and it actually seems to have put from the last match or so I think it seems to have put the fish off a bit except for the roach which is why I'm here. There are. Let's see what's happening. I don't know if you guys are getting this, but the float is over there, about 15 inches to the right, uh, to the left of those lilies. There's a lily pad on the right. Now, sometimes the caster will sink at a different speed to the uh, to the maggots. So the worm on the left, I can sort of afford if I. It's not like missing a bite. It's going to go under and hold it under because it's got two big pieces of worm to get hold of with small baits like this you know one pip of the float and you've uh, if you don't strike it you've missed it and nothing on the caster another tip I was given by a silver specialist is just bump that float an inch and that in turn bumps the bait across the bottom and if there are fish around it they say that maggot sitting amongst 10 or 20 other maggots and they're just feeding this, what we call grazing, over the top of it. Worm went then. They're just grazing over the top of it. If they see this little bump, just a movement like this, bump, that just targets them. And they, I think they think they're just getting away. But the matchmen do that quite a lot with the float. If they don't get any bites for a while, they just go tighten up to it again. Just bump it about an inch or so. Very often you get a bite as soon as, you know, within seconds. So nothing on the caster. Let's go back to... I feel single red. I know people might think, well, you never gave that any chance, Graham, but... 
Okay, what have we got? What have we got on the worm? What have we got on the worm? I'm going to call this as a perch, boys. This might... This might be... Oh, what? It's a nice big roach. It is a big roach. And this one's more like a what more roach. This is what I was coming for with a worm. Wowie. I'm not sure, boys. That is not the biggest roach I've yet caught out of Watmore. And they reckon they grow to about two pounds in here. What a beauty. Am I glad I did those jobs and came out? And that's why I say just, if you can grab those sessions in the winter, honestly, well worth doing. Here we go, people. How about that for a spanker of a roach? You might think it's strange I'm fishing with worm and yet I'm baiting with maggots and casters and everything, but it gets all the fish feeding. It gets them all around. And the other thing, get yourself a hand wiped towel. You can go into charity shops, buy a few towels, give them a 50p or something like that, generous. They generally go to rags bin anyway, and then you just cut them up, you've got rags. Don't bother washing them, you can dump them. Obviously not of the fishery, no, no, not of the fishery. Wow, that's a nice roach. Well, here he is, <laughs> here is the culprit of most worm tugging that children had as kids. A small perch, and he's even got his fin up for you, like a miniature perch, and trust me, there's a much, whoopsie, I missed that one. And here, <laughs> if we get this one, is a nice roach on here, I can feel this one, I'm gonna wind him in. That's a double worm, Mr. Perch is going back in one second, I just wanna get attention on this roach. But you can see the size of worm that perch has attacked. So don't be worried about using big worms for perch. There we go, and this one, I feel is a pretty nice roach, followed straight up. There we go. I mean, it's not bad fishing, is it? It's, like, it's worth coming out for, a look. There he is. Nice big palm-sized roach there. Look at his pretty eye, Jim. I come from that era, unfortunately. The old Mr. Crabtree original books. So, worms and maggots appear to be working, people. Can I say no more. And the trees, yes, the trees are tanning as well. I'm lucky I've not got carped out yet. I feel there's time. Now, some people just change maggots, uh, change baits all the time, I don't bother. There's nothing wrong with that worm. I caught that perch on it, I just pop it back over the eye again, through the saddle, what they call the saddle there. I've got to watch this right hand float because that's where I think a big perch might be. There it is, it's gone, and I've missed it. You can see the action you get. The two float rods people, I can barely keep up pace with them. It's the time of day. I can't say the sun's going down, it's not exactly sun, my fingers are like blocks of ice. But it is perfect conditions for float fishing close in like this. You can see it's a sheet of burnished glass. I'd love to see that worm bait go with a nice big fat perch on there. I think what I'm going to do people, I'm going to probably go to the head cam now because I don't know what angle you'll get in there. In fact, I'm going to show you the floats and risk a bite miss here. Over if I hold it dead still there, you can see, that's the uh, float there. Even got a bite on it. Look, look, you should be able to watch a bite. I'm going to get back to my rod in some way. And miss it. Hopefully you saw the bite on the worm. Probably another small perch. And meanwhile, hopefully you can see the antenna float there. I'm holding it as steady as I can. I don't know if you're going to get that or not. But there's actually a small bite. Oh, there we go. So there's a bite on that. And obviously I can't get to the rod. So one assumes it's a small fish. The float comes back up. And you can see it's a much, much bigger float. It takes about four swan. Here goes the line. Oh, I missed it again. Right, boys. Right, people, I've missed two in a row there, messing with the camera. So I feel it's time to put the camera. Go to head cam mode.
people I just put the head cap on the worms were down here and the fish took it in the margins it wasn't even the right spot I think it's a roach there we go look look, look at the size of this roach look Yeah, lovely roach, and that was on the worm. So they're pretty well on the bite. Worms, maggots, doesn't seem to make much difference, but nothing on the caster. Okay boys, something different here. Helicopter's gone over, look at this one. That's a rud. Look at the, if I can get it on the angle of the sun there, you can see the lovely gold in that one. Beautiful fins there, very, very colorful fish. Almost, and it probably does originate from being ornamental. There we go. A hey, good looker, as they say. Fish on boys, on the worm, and it's not, not a roach very 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 heavy feel to it it's not a perch it's definitely got to be a carp this one and that was literally just down there with a single worm check that drag on this well 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 that was a strange old bite he's got this rod locked over for certain I'm just concerned about that bunch of leaves to the left, so I'm letting him do his stuff. He's probably going to get me in the leaves eventually if he wakes up. He can pretty well go where he wants to go, this fish. Wow. <laughs> the rod's got a curve on it like it shouldn't have. Well, I haven't got a turn on the reel yet. Be nice to see him. There is nothing worse. Nothing worse than losing a fish and you don't get to see it. Well, I don't want to get carped out. Be nice to catch one. Yeah, just one. That's all we want. Hey, he's come off. I might even have a scale on the hook there. No, it's just all come off completely. 
Well, at least I haven't wasted a lot of time on and get back for the perch. That is a problem with the carp. You can see what he's taken, one and a half worms there. So I'll re-hook that, I see no reason. You can also double up and put maggots on this as well, people. You can, you can make what we call a combo bait. So it was a big fish, it was a big fish. Possibly into low doubles, but uh, there you go. Just pulled off the hook. Let's see a little bit more ground bait there. Now you can leave it powdery. You can leave the ground bait loose, or you can squeeze it quite hard, and then it breaks up slower, and the fish have got to sort of dig at it a little bit more. So two ways of uh, doing that. I think my maggots are escaping. And I can actually see all the bubbles that are coming out up from there. I've a few bit of hemp in each swim. Should keep them. Oh, it's gone again. I'm on again. What is oh he's come off again. That was a good fish. That also was a good fish. Wow. And possibly might be the carp who moved in on me. <laughs> Nothing really wrong with those maggots. I'm going to put a maggot on there as well. Just after I put the bait in, as you noticed. Let's get the other one out. No, don't go up the tree, please don't go up the tree. I'm always concerned when I don't really feel the power of a fish. Was that a big perch? The last one, the previous one I lost, got the rod whacked over. Absolutely no question, that was a carp. But that last one I've lost, I'm a little bit dubious. You never know, that could have been a really big perch. I'm on a good fish again, boys. I really, really... I think I've a bad feeling this is a big roach. Oh, it's a perch, it's a nice perch. This is what we come for. I've had one nice roach. Oh, yeah. There we go. What a double I've had. I thought, I thought that was a different fish. As you can see there. Double rib maggot. Hook fell out. Look at this chappy. Ah, oh, look at him in the sunshine. Look at that chappy. Absolutely stunning golden eye. Fat belly to him. And a big, perfect fin there. That's a, that's a beautiful fish, that one. They seem to be making something of a comeback in the UK and it's gratefully accepted. Let's get him back. Well, I'm on a big carp out in the middle of the lake. Can do nothing with it. And it's probably going to be a one-way ticket. I've no idea how big it is. It could be really good size. It's going right around the side here, so I've, I can only just pressure it and Hope it all holds together because I'm on a hook link on this one, 16 to whatever it is, 2.8 2 or something. I might get it, I might get lucky. I might get lucky, you never know. Strange things happen at sea. He's up on the surface, I think it is a common carp actually, people. How long I'm going to stay attached to him for is anybody's guess. A decent one, I think he's over six. Let's have a look at him, he's coming slowly, he's coming slowly, coming slowly. No, he's, we might have a chance here, I don't know. Just got to roll him, got to stretch him a little bit more. Come on, baby. We got him. Oh, yeah. I think that was more, more by luck than judgment, people. There we go. There he is. Yeah, he's about six. So there we are. On the match rod. Float. He's moved in. Double red maggot. A nice carp. But of course.
course, at this stage in the procedure, guys, I would much sooner have had a nice big fat perch. We'll put him back in the net. There he goes. He's coughing up maggots all the time, so he's been he's been shoveling those maggots down mine, eating his way through them. But presumably, when they come in like that. They're digging around, they're A, eating a lot of bait, and B, they're far more aggressive uh, than the roach and the perch. Certainly the roach are more delicate feeders. So I've got 45 minutes left to try and catch something else. But so far, pretty good success. Oh, I just loaded up on an animal, boys. I guess, let's pull this worm out of the way. I guess it's a carp. It's one hell of a perch otherwise. There we go. Stripping me out. Peeling me out. Easy as pie on this match rod. You never know, we might get lucky with it. This could eat up my f roach fishing time unfortunately. But it still would be nice to catch one. Take any fish that comes along. The trouble is, because I want to get back in for the roach and perch, I'm probably going to overcook this fish and pop it off. Put quite a lot of power on him. Right, I'm going to click it off for a second, guys. Oh, here's a float. Here's a float down there. Might be able to see him. Let's have a look at him. No, no chance. Big swirl underneath the surface. This is going to be a, a five or ten minute job, people. So I'm just going to click off for a second. Hang on. He doesn't like that direct over the top pressure on him. Come on, let's look at you. Let's see how you are. See how big you are. No, he's running me out now. Peeling a bit of line off. A little bit of line I gained, I've lost. Now I couldn't have done this the other evening with a size 20 hook, at least with this hook. It's a wider gate, stronger wire, a couple of sizes up. There's an outside chance I could, could land this fish. He's peeling me out again. He looks, I've got a glimpse of it there. It looks like a common carp. Probably the same -ish sort of size as this last one. Yeah. Probably still going to give me a lot of trouble trying to get him in the net. Come on, Mr. Fish. My fingers are freezing on this rod. You just don't want to lay over this one. He's in. He swam the wrong way. He swam the wrong way. Actually, boys. Oh no, he's bigger than the last one. Oh yeah. That's why I had trouble with him. Way bigger than the last one. Great big fat. No, don't get my hands any colder, please. And there's a red maggot's just in the... The hook's falling out. Hook's in the net. And there you go, people. Oh, yeah, he's about. 
is probably eight-ish, nine us towards eight. A nice fish, nice to throw a good session. Let's get him back. Nice, clean, good looking fish that one. And away he goes. Perfecto. Right, down to the last bit of ground bait going here, people. Uh, keep it on this side, because this is where I might get a perch, you don't know. That's a lot of it. It's gone. <sighs> pinch of casters, pinch of maggots, and one for the worm swim, I'm going to call it. Where's that hemp? That can go in as well. Right. Let's clear that out, boys. I've got about five to ten minutes max. Boys, oh no, oh no. You know where this is going. <laughs> you know where this is going, boys. I was just about to come on camera and say, uh, I've got a big carp hooked up and it's peeling me out. <laughs> the other float's gone and I've got another. Oh, that one's off, thank God for that. That's big time. I've lost two, I had a double hook up a carp then. So obviously I might as well pack up now. That one's probably popped me off, I should think. No, I've got the hook back. This one's on his way up the road to Reading. And it's on the worm so I can pressure him because I'm fishing five pounds straight through. And this was a real, real solid strike when I came up against it. You probably won't get very much of this, I don't know, because it's almost dark. Not that I'm going to get it on a match rod, but you never know. So obviously that's why the roach shut down. I had another rud, a couple of small roach, and it seemed to go dead and that's what's happened. The bit, you know, the big carp have started moving in on me. And the guys in that match would be very pleased. The guy who walked past me said he didn't have one all day. But it's the time in the evening. I'm gonna keep pressure on this kitty. He doesn't like it, obviously. Oopsie. He's got quite a bit of line out there. Yeah, I got all that line back, he's took it all he's took it all out again. Yeah. Maybe this one's gonna be a one-way ticket. He starts kiting to the right. I'll switch off for a minute guys till I uh Till I get him in close. Oh, I got a lot of pressure on that. Come on. Oh yeah, bigger splash out there. He did not like the extra pressure then. Here we coming up, coming up, coming up. It's gonna jump like a marlin. Here he comes, he needs to be near the top. Another common. I wanna call him the same size. Feeling he's going to ping off. I don't know. I may be wrong. If I can get him to roll, that would be nice. He's the biggest fish. He's the biggest fish, boys. He's not just a five pounder. He's over the sixes and sevens. I think this one. Trying to turn him one way then the other. Tie him out a bit more. No, he's not ready.
Sometimes in the winter here at Watmore, the carp are unbelievably strong. I don't know if it's the deep water, the cold water, what it is. They just seem to fight and fire. I think I'm going to get him rolling now. Here we go. Yes. It's a nice one, guys. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, we holy cow, no wonder I had a fight with him. No wonder. He's going to weigh this one, guys, because I figure he's not far for nine. Oh, I thought so. He's coming in at... 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Oh, no wonder I had a fight in a match with that one. There we go. If you can see him, great. If not, take my word for it. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Wow, good session. Two and a half hours and plenty of fish. Let's get him back. There we go, there we go. That's a nice looker. A nice big fat common to finish. Obviously no chance of roach whatsoever. Once these guys move in. Well there you go. That was about the best two and a quarter hours fishing I've spent in the last year. Brilliant conditions. They were bang on for float fishing. That's why I wanted to go there. If you get the chance, give it a go. It's entertaining. You don't hear buzzers go off or anything like that. You've got to watch the floats. You see how many mistakes you made by how many bites you missed, just like I did. We'll see you guys in the next issue of Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't miss it. Hit the subscribe button on both channels, TA Fishing. And don't forget, Mike's getting some good numbers on his TA Outdoors. We'll see you guys in the next film. Está mal, es muy adicto a lo que diga la gente. Todo de mani, pero pobre de su mal. Quiere todo eso, quiere comprar lo que el dinero no le da. Qué mala vida la que tiene, con tantos bajos y placeres. Si sabe perder lo que nunca tuve de chico quiero tener Y ahora que lo tengo todo se siente bien víctima Es que no es mi culpa que no tenga nada Trabaja de noche hasta madrugar No pude mostrarles que si es capaz Y si eres una víctima Vaya por su casa dejemos